In this lecture, we are going to talk about osmotic equilibrium, isotonic fluids, hypotonic fluids, and hypertonic fluids, and these the, the role of these different types of fluids in maintaining the osmotic equilibrium. Now, let's recall what we discussed in our last few lectures. We discussed osmosis, osmolarity, and osmotic pressure. <coughs> we discussed that basically osmosis is the movement of water. Osmosis is the movement of water and it is basically the movement of water from a region with high concentration of water to a region with low concentration of water across a semi-permeable membrane, a membrane which will allow the water to move but will not allow the solutes to move. Now, when there is movement of water from this region where the concentration of water is high or the concentration of solute is low to a region where there is concentration of water is low and the concentration of solute is high, there is a pressure generated. Now, you see, we discussed osmolarity and osmotic pressure. Due to, if this water is moving from a region with high concentration of water to a region with low concentration of water, a pressure, a force is needed to stop the movement of this water. And that force needed to stop the movement of water from this side with high concentration of water to this side with low concentration of water. That pressure needed to stop the movement of this water is osmotic pressure. And osmolarity is basically depending dependent upon the number of osmotically active particles in any substance. Now, these are the things which we discussed in detail. Now, we are going to, to, de to discuss their effects on the different body cells when body cells are kept in uh, different solution with different amounts of solute. Now, suppose for example, uh, this is a cell. This is a single cell of the human body and we put this cell in different types of fluids which we label as isotonic, hypotonic and hypertonic and then we see the effects. Now we are going to basically see that what are the application of the, 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 the things which we discussed, the, the application of osmosis, osmolarity, osmotic pressure and different uh, types of uh, body fluids uh, on the human body. Now if we see, if we put this cell, if we put the cell into a fluid which has the same concentration, which has the same concentration is the cell itself, for example, a fluid with ha which is having the same amount of solute in the same concentration, then that type of fluid, that type of fluid is called isotonic fluid. And if we put the cell in this fluid and we make sure, we make sure that the cell membrane, the cell membrane will not allow the movement of solute. The cell membrane, the cell membrane will not allow the movement of solute particles. It will allow the movement of water only. It will allow the movement of water only or osmosis only or the cell membrane is basically semi-permeable. Then we see that putting the cell in isotonic fluid will result in no change. There will It will result in no change in the size of the cell. The size of the cell remains the same before putting in the cell. Now before putting in this fluid which is basically isotonic fluid or which has the same concentration as the concentration of fluid inside the cell. So this, the size of the cell remains the same before putting into the fluid and after putting into the fluid. Now, if we have a fluid in which the concentration of that fluid is basically less than the fluid inside the cell, such a fluid is basically hypotonic. Now, example of isotonic fluids is, isotonic fluid is basically 0.9% saline, 0.9% NaCl or 5% dextrose, 5% dextrose. So these are two examples of isotonic fluids and their importance is that we can infuse these fluids normally. A patient with a person with normal uh, osmolarity will survive and will uh, basically tolerate a lot of these kinds of fluid without changing the composition or the water level of the cell. Now the good thing is and the important thing is to remember is that while doing, the, while putting the cell in the fluid, the isotonic, hypotonic and hypertonic, we must make sure that the cell membrane, that the solute, basically they cannot pass the cell membrane. Only and only water should move. Now, if cell is put in the iso hypotonic fluid, hypotonic fluid, any fluid below 0 0.9, for example, 0.45% saline. Now, this saline is also sometimes used in the hospitals, but in special conditions. And that's uh, why we are discussing these things so that we can clinically use these different types of fluids in different circumstances in which the osmolarity of the body has changed due to different diseases or different conditions, environmental conditions. So if a cell is put in a fluid which is hypotonic or a fluid which is having solute concentration less than the concentration of fluid inside the cell. Here we had a, a fluid with same concentration as the concentration of fluid inside the cell. Here the concentration is less. 
So 0.9% is actually normal uh, concentration for the body. 0.45 is less. Now what happens is that the, the water concentration inside the cell is very low. And water concentration outside the cell is high because of low solute and because of the high protonic fluid. What happens is, uh, sorry, the water concentration in the cell inside the cell is low and water concentration outside the cell is high because of low solute. So water starts moving into the cell. Water starts moving into the cell, a condition known as osmosis. Now osmosis starts and the effect of putting cell in hypotonic fluid like 0.45% saline is that the cell will start increasing in size because the water will come inside the cell. The solute will not come inside the cell but water will keep on entering the cell. And the effect of putting cell in the hypotonic fluid is that the cell will swell or, or the cell will increase in size. If we compare its size with the normal cell, we see that there is an increase in size of the cell or there is swelling of the cell because of increased absorption of water. The water has entered because the concentration of water outside the cell was very high and concentration of water inside the cell was very low due to the hypotonic fluid so the cell size of the cell has increased here the water concentration outside and inside the cell was the same that's why it was labeled as isotonic fluid and there was no movement of water despite of the fact that the cell membrane was permeable to water it was not permeable to solute but still no movement of water occurred now we put the cell in hypertonic in hypertonic uh, uh, fluid now he the normal Tonicity or the normal osmolarity is around 280. So this fluid is around 280 milli osmol per liter. This is hypotonic. So this suppose for example, this is 0.45% saline or around 200 os milli osmol per liter. Here we have a hypertonic. See here we have 280 milli osmol. Here we have low osmolarity or 200 and where we have a hypertonic saline in which the concentration of the fluid is higher than the concentration of fluid inside the cell. Now, suppose for example, this may be a fluid uh, like uh, 2 or 3% saline, suppose for example, or the osmolarity is around 360, which is more than 280. So this is a hypertonic saline. What will happen in, to the cell in this, uh, to this cell in this fluid is that the, the concentration of water, the concentration of water inside this cell is high. Concentration of water is high inside the cell as compared to concentration of water in the fluid. The amount of fluid in this container may be high. The amount may be high but the concentration of water is high in this cell. So when we put the cell in this hypertonic fluid, in this hypertonic fluid, it is hypertonic because of the higher solute amount. What happens is that fluid from this higher concentration, from this higher concentration starts moving towards the region with low concentration of water, a condition known as osmosis, a condition known as osmosis. And what happens is that the size of the cell shrinks. Now here the size of the cell has decreased. It is a shrunken cell now. So we see that the effect, the effects of uh, putting a cell in the isotonic, hypotonic and hypertonic fluid are that by putting the cell in isotonic fluid, there is no movement of water across the cell membrane and the size of the cell remains the same. While putting the cell in hypotonic fluid, there is movement of water into the cell and there is increase in size and swelling of the cell and by putting the cell in hypertonic fluid a fluid in which the tonicity the osmolarity is high the osmolarity is high and the concentration of water is low as compared to concentration of water in the cell so there is movement of water from the cell towards the fluid and the cell size of the cell shrinks and decreases now all these factors are basically important in maintaining the osmotic equilibrium in basically uh, trying to maintain the amount of water and the tonicity the osmolarity in the body now these um, factors are very really important in different conditions. As we progress in this chapter, we will start discussing each and everything that how these uh, factors are playing their role. But as we pre previously discussed osmosis, which was basically the movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane, and now we have seen that the effect of osmosis on a cell. Similarly, we will see its clinical application of uh, by how using different uh, cell, uh, solutions like 0.9% saline or 0.4% saline or 2 to 3 percent saline how they will basically affect the cells now in this thing in the isotonic hypotonic and hypertonic we make sure that the cell membrane only allows the water and it does not allow the movement of salute in the next lecture we will see a different thing in which we will discuss the isoosmotic 
hypo osmotic and hyper osmotic fluid in which we will not be discussing isotonic rather we will be discussing iso osmotic and hypo osmotic and hyper osmotic and then we will see the difference that what is basically the difference between isotonic and iso osmotic hypotonic and hypo osmotic hypertonic and hyper osmotic fluids that's all about the osmotic equilibrium and its maintenance with the help of different types of body fluids thanks a lot for watching the video